Hey, deserving listeners. This is the 12th installment of the Dungeons and Dragons therapy episode thing that we've been doing. And if you're listening to this without the video, then know that you can go to YouTube and you can actually see us in full Brady Bunch form uh, with our facial expressions playing Dungeons and Dragons. Um, I've been told that Adam Davis and Umberto make some very important critical facial expressions throughout that really cannot be missed so go to face go to, go to youtube and watch those facial expressions or just listen because it's also uh fine to just listen to the audio um all right so for those who don't know and this might be the first time we've been doing we've been demonstrating adam johns has been demonstrating for us what it looks like to use dungeons and dragons in a therapeutic context or in a community building context usually dungeons and dragons is for uh, it's just, it's quote unquote, just a game that's used in various different ways. But one of the ways that it can be used is in therapy, group therapy, and in uh, community building in a very intentional way. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to play it. Adam Johns is demonstrating how to do it in a way that uh, for me as a player, for Umberto as a player, and Adam Davis as a player, for us to have an opportunity to grow as people, to explore our identity to gain self-esteem through connection with our, uh, with, you know, each other, but with the veil of a avatar that we control, that is a little bit separate from us and gives us perhaps a little bit more courage and freedom to play around with that is, uh, safer, for example. And then through that self-esteem and identity exploration, we can take that with us into our real lives with, um, you know, better confidence, more social skills, and, um, you know, more well-being and direction in life and that kind of stuff. So um, keep that in mind. Having said that, whenever we play this, I'm just always having a blast and it doesn't feel like work at all to me. It doesn't feel like self-esteem building at all to me. It just feels like kick-ass fun that I've been craving and have been occasionally involved in since I was in the fifth grade and I first saw the basic set of Dungeons and Dragons in 1981. And I don't know why, but I just knew that all I wanted to do was play that game, even though I had no idea what it meant or how it was played. And I wouldn't know and for another 20 years, really. Anyway, so welcome to the podcast, everyone. This is the Psychology in Seattle podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Kirk Honda. I'm a therapist and a professor. Who are you, Umberto? My name is Umberto Castaneda, and I pray, play, I pray. I, I keep doing that. did that last time. I play Rollo the Cruel. Mm. And Adam Davis, who are you? Uh, my name is Adam Davis. I'm one of the founders and executive directors of Game to Grow, a nonprofit organization based in Seattle. Uses Dungeons and Dragons therapeutically, but I also play Shush the Bard. And Adam Johns, who are you? Uh, my name is Adam Johns. I'm the other executive director uh, and founder of Game to Grow, and I am the uh, venerable game master of this um, stew of adventures. Great. Well, get us started, Adam Johns, with your stew. Perfect. Um, as as uh, if you listen to other episodes, as you know, we like to start off with a little bit of a check-in question to get everybody kind of warmed up a little bit uh, in in themselves and as their characters. So my check-in question for you today, uh, maybe amidst uh, some of the things that are going on uh, right now as we're all a little socially isolated, um, I want to know what would you do to keep your mind together, to keep your, um, for lack of a better term, your sanity. Um, uh, if you were trapped alone on a desert island uh, and go ahead and answer that question for yourself and then answer that question for your character. So it's a little bit like um, the movie Castaway, I guess, uh, you know, t watching Tom Hanks sort of uh, try to keep himself together and keep himself motivated to keep moving forward uh, while he's trapped on a desert island. And I want to know what you would do for that, for that particular thing. Umberto, what, what would you do? I, I can start us out. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. So me personally, if I were trapped in a desert island, uh, first, I would I would think survival. That would be my first thing. So I would try to recall everything that I had seen in movies or read. I'd search around really quickly as much as I could during the daytime because I knew that I, I wouldn't have that many day, daylight hours. Hopefully, it is daylight right now. Um, I would try to gather resources. So it would all be like the first, I don't know, week or at least few days would be about how am I going to survive this thing? 
that would be my, my paranoia kicking in. And so I'd be scouring for nutrition and what am I going to eat? All those things. Um, then I would get really worried about getting diseases too. So I'd be like trying to see if I can protect my skin and like, you know, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Once years down the line, when I can relax, <laughs> I would look around and be like, Hey, I'm in a desert Island. This is pretty neat. Um, so then I would start writing songs, you know, and, um, I might have to like write the lyrics on rocks, I guess, like carve them in or on carve them on wood. Probably. I probably developed some tools over time. Maybe I could recreate papyrus in some way. And yeah, so I would write songs and of course instruments, that would be a fun little pastime. I'd have like try to create instruments out of like bear guts or I don't know how I killed the bears, but you know, like <laughs> I do stuff, you know, man, I, I would grab shells and be like, woo, woo. Then I'd probably invent a multi-track recorder of some sort. <laughs> classic, classic desert island multi-track recorder. <laughs> That's me though. Grolo. <clears throat> man, if Grolo was uh, trapped in a, okay, I think Grolo's approach would be a little different because um, he, he wouldn't be, you know, like planny. So he probably, he would probably eat his way through the island in the first few days and realize that there's no food left. So then he would probably start swimming, but he hates like, you know, he hates being soaking wet all the time. So man, he's probably not going to survive very long to tell you the truth. I think to pass the time though, he would start singing songs that he remembered performing with, with his, you know, band when they were still together and, and not on a desert island. And he would just sing those songs into the night. So that part would be similar. You know, we'd have a little music connection there. But I don't give him great odds of survival, honestly. <laughs> Anything that's on the island would probably perish and get in his belly. That is, that is the one thing. He might have an advantage over me in that he might be able to hunt those bears and actually, oh, if we could both <laughs> be on the island, that would you be could help each, You could help each other out. That'd be great. <laughs> I love it. That's, that's perfect. Uh, how about you, Adam? Uh, so one of the things that I do to maintain my sanity just anyway, I don't know how I would do this on a desert island, but I like to journal. I'm a journaler. Um, I was, uh, went through a process of watching lots of different YouTube videos of people sort of explaining their morning routines. And, um, one of the morning routines that I really appreciated that I picked up is, um, what they call morning pages. And that's where like, I just like to sort of brain dump into a journal I don't know how I would do that on a desert island, but I think I would, you know, invent papyrus. I would have to just to maintain my sanity, or I would find some chalk and write on cave walls. Um, but I just have, to, I have the thoughts in my head have to be put somewhere uh, so my brain doesn't swim around uh, around those thoughts. So I, my my way of maintaining sanity on a desert island or in quarantine lockdown, like we are in Seattle, is uh, I write a lot, um, sort of get my thoughts out of my head. That's how I would I would um, probably talk to myself when I write in a journal. I talk to it. Like it's Wilson. <laughs> like, thank you for being there for me. Thank you for listening, Wilson. Um, that's how I would survive. Um, Shush, almost assuredly, if he had the capacity to play music, would find the that sort of like the check-in question from last game was he would stare at the horizon and and play play songs and just look at the stars and find inspiration and and the the sea of consciousness that floats around in Shush's mind also would would be a, a source of inspiration where he would um, rely on that for some um, exploration of his subconscious, I'm sure. Well, doesn't Shush have an advantage too? Like, doesn't he have some spells he could use to try to get off the island or something? <laughs> if we were literally thinking desert island and how would he survive? Sure. Um, <laughs> yes, he would probably do something. He does know how to sail a ship. He might actually be able to build a ship. On That's the, true. On his his uh, That's capacity true. for seamanship might be really valuable in this context. Um, if it's just about staying alive, then I think he would probably just play music and look for coconuts. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if he was really um, tasked with surviving on a desert island a uh, little shift in the check-in question but he would probably try to build a boat yeah well i kind of like how both you umberto and adam in your you know real life scenario for the two of you involves technology that you would have to somehow magically create in order to uh... <laughs> so if i had that option yeah i'd I'd create like a computer with an internet connection. And, <laughs> and, uh, that's sure. how I would pass the time. But short of that, 
the only thing that really popped in my head, and it's hard to know, is I would write stories in my head. I Sometimes when I'm bored and I'm just kind of staring at the wall, I'll think of like, okay, if I was a script writer, what kind of script would I write? And I try to piece together a, a story that would be interesting to me anyway. Um, I have no idea if any of that would be any good. In fact, I'm sure it'd be terrible, but um, I don't know. I've done that a number of times in my head. For, um, for Thring, well, he's a dedicated uh, priest to Moradin, so he would pray all the time. Uh, m- more time to spend with his God, more time to worship. Uh, and what else are you going to do in that instance? So uh, he would do that. He'd probably also deeply regret whatever he did to get him in that situation. Because I, I think that uh, he thinks that he can control things. And so I think he would have a lot of regret as that would plague him over the years. Uh, that, that makes a lot of sense. I can, I can picture him like really, really struggling with the, the, um, oh, really, really struggling with, with the circumstances that had gotten him there. Uh, I guess I should answer the, the um, uh, checking question as well. Um, I would spend my, uh, time. I think I would. I would largely take kind of a castaway perspective. I would need to make like a like a, a persona. I would need to make like a, a thing for me to talk to. Um, I would talk to myself, and I think eventually I would. I would need to make a friend or something uh, that I that I started referring to 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 tell stories to. And I think I also uh, uh, like you, Kirk. I think I would. I would create stories. I think I'd tell a lot of my like okay. own stories uh, from my my past or whatever, and be like, ah, you remember that guy or, or whatever <laughs> that I'd be talking to my friend about. Uh, and then eventually I would run out of those stories and then I would start making up uh, brand new stories to, to tell with my friend. Um, I think that's really how I would hold myself together for, for all that experience. Would you start blaming your, your imaginary friend for everything? I think I would. I think I would get like in, in fights with him because I think that's like a little bit of the norm. Like we need to get in fights and then make up. Um, <laughs> I also think that I would not write the stories down as much as I would love to like someday be rescued and then have all these stories written down. I think I would do a bad job at that. <laughs> I think oh. I would mostly just tell the stories and then they would all sort of float around in my Gosh, head, uh, which is also out. kind of how I game master as well. I write down notes. Oh, no. but I don't really like should have seen that guy. Write down the story as it is. <laughs> I think that's uh, very much how I would sort of handle being isolated and alone like that. Um, Perfect. Thank you all for your for your answers. Maybe that will come back up in our game. Who knows? We'll see. That's a, you're you're all on a desert island. Oh, no, no. <laughs> How did this happen? <laughs> um, uh, perfect. Well, uh, I would love it, Kirk. Do you feel up for a recap for us from from last game to to kind of jump us into our D and D? Sure. So listen to the last game for the full recap. But uh, last time we were traveling with. Uh, Grolo's, Grolo's father and some of his compatriots, orcs, and they were having some tension. We met up with the full orc tribe, which doesn't worship groups. They worship the good orc god uh, by the name of something with the L word, Lor- Lorleth. And uh, we had a good time with them, and they resupplied us and got us on our way. I tried to employ the leader to fight with us against the Groomshites. And then we went along our way. We're heading into the mountain because my God is calling me to an old dwarf kingdom where supposedly a hammer of Moradin is there where I can defeat uh, Lord Blancmere, the, the evil avatar of Grumsh. But before we got there, we ran into some traveling Willberries, if you will, and we performed our Moradin hit, and everyone was amazed, and uh, that was fun. And then uh, we got into the mountain, and we started hearing some, uh, or we saw evidence of some creatures that like to eat through rock and tunnel, and just as we started to hear some of those, oh, I saw a hammer. It didn't look glorious, but it looked like a hammer. And then we heard some monsters uh, skittering about. 
Um, it's and quite that's, ominous. It is, it, is, it is a bit ominous. And so um, the three of you are in this, it, deep in this cave system, uh, in this uh, uh, abandoned and largely destroyed uh, city, dwarf city. Um, and you are staring down this uh, pathway. Um, it's really a street is what it used to be. And there are buildings to your right and left uh, that are largely collapsed. Um, in a dwarf city like this, especially bu buried into a mountain, the buildings are all made of stone. Uh, and so as they, as they have collapsed, they're basically just, just big piles of stone and rubble. Uh, but you can tell that, that there once were walls and there once were buildings there. Um, but down the long, the long way of this street, just to catch you back up with the visuals that you're seeing, uh, you can see that the end of the street sort of uh, uh, bottoms out into a, a circle. Um, and at the edge of that circle, there is clearly the, the uh, steps and pillars of a temple. Um, and you can see the symbols of Moradin are around on the, on the pillars and, and on various items. And in fact, you can even see some of the homes or some of the shops that, that are uh, along the street also have symbols of Moradin. It's clear that this is a, a, a um, uh, dwarves that once were all worshippers of Mord. Um, and down the temple you can see uh, there is with just like a little bit of light, almost like it's it's coming from the sky somewhere or it's coming from, from someplace unknown, uh, shining down onto this pedestal sitting in the in the middle. And from your view, you can see just just perfectly, kind of right in front of you almost, even though it's you know 150 feet away, uh, this hammer sitting on this pedestal. And it is an old rusted blacksmithing hammer. Um, and it is, it is sitting there. It's, it seems to be on the pedestal and it seems like you're clearly being called to it. Uh, Thorn, uh, um, Thrain, uh, especially you, uh, you feel like there's a, there's a call there. There's, there's something, uh, really pulling you in that direction. Uh, but you do hear this skittering sound. You feel like you might not have a whole lot of time on your hands. Okay. Um, I just start running and I which run way are you running to the hammer? Wait, you're running towards the hammer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a quick, quick question: Have all of us seen this hammer? Like it was very obvious. Like we all saw it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you can you can totally see it. The the cave is open enough here that you can really get a really good view down this long this long street. I guess. Drain, wait! That's not the hammer. It's all rusted. If it is a hammer from from Moradin, then it is more powerful than you could imagine. And then right now the we're seven. hearing, is the, skitter, is the skittering getting louder? It is. And it's also coming from all around you. Um, it doesn't really feel like, <laughs> especially with the caves, it is echoing off walls. Um, actually, everybody roll me a little bit of a perception. Uh, everybody but Thrain roll me a perception check. Uh, Thrain, you are singularly focused at the moment. Okay, 20. Oh, awesome. Uh, Shush, you are uh, just sort of uh, trying to pinpoint where the skittering is coming from, where the sounds are coming from, uh, and everything in this place is just echoing off cave walls. Um, you really can't figure out exactly where the sounds are coming from. They just sound like they're coming from everywhere, actually, um, in kind of a terrifying way. Uh, Grolo, um, you are noticing that the cave walls in this place um, are not actually smooth walls. Um, they have these pits and divots. Originally, they just look like claw marks uh, or uh, honestly teeth marks and bite marks. Uh, but as you're taking a closer look, especially as you're trying to narrow down where the skittering is coming from, you can tell some of these divots are holes, maybe not much bigger than this, um, that seem to burrow really far into the wall. Um, and as you're sort of staring, you watch as something comes up out of the out of the hole in the wall and it's a small creature it almost looks like a um a praying mantis uh but a little more hardy um and and sort of about the size of a large tarantula um and uh it has uh, uh large mandibles but it also has those those praying mantis sort of um uh hooked claws 
uh, that it kind of has out in front of it. Um, and you can see its its mandibles are, are dripping and the dripping from its mandibles, the sort of saliva that it has is hitting the stone and you can see the stone is sizzling and bubbling. Um, clearly indicating it has some kind of acidic uh, uh, spit. Um, but by this time, Grillo, you can see Thrain is already a uh, solid halfway down the, the alleyway um, and uh, uh, made, made it most of the way down to the, to the hammer. Oh, there's stuff coming from the walls. So I start running towards the thing that I'm seeing in the walls and I, and I want to attack it. I want to kill it with fire. Not really, like just I want to attack it. Perfect. It sort of uh, sees you and it, it kind of rears up uh, with its like mandible teeth and it kind of goes like, <clears throat> and it makes like a hissing noise kind of in your direction. Uh, but give me an attack roll. Okay. Um, roll in, roll in. Oh no. Uh, what is, what do I add to this? My, uh... Uh, you get to add your, the middle bonus there after your, whatever your uh, mall plus five uh, is. So plus five. So I got a t- I rolled a two, so I, I guess that's a seven. Um, I'm gonna say, uh, so you don't hit this thing, but you do hit the you hit the wall. Um, and with the the acid and the claw marks and things like that, you basically you still kill this bug, but you don't really smack it really good. Instead, you kind of drag uh, your your maul against the wall, and it creates like Gross. a small cave in the little in the little thing. Uh, yes. and, it, and it kind of, you know, uh, um, squirts out bug juice and, uh, and it's pretty gross. Um, and as you, as you've like smashed this bug, there's like a moment of, of sort of silence. And then you hear the skittering sounds getting louder and louder. Um, there's more of them coming. By the way, did any acid fall on me? Uh, no, uh, good, no, right? no, you were, okay. you were able to, to sort of keep yourself. Do I see any other ones? Um, no, now it's just okay. this skittering. But I just hear like, okay, yeah. there's and more can, of them coming. You can Shush. hear a, a lot more coming from behind you, uh, almost um, uh, pinning you into this, into this hallway that you're in, the street that you're in. Uh, Thrain, by now, uh, you have made it to uh, the steps and you are now at the, the base of this um, uh, temple. Uh, and you feel the presence of of Morid in here. Um, you know that this once was uh, maybe a great temple. And as you walk your way up the steps, you can see this hammer sitting on this pedestal. And there's no signs, there's no uh, indication uh, of what this is, although it is in the center of this temple of Morid. Um, what do you want to do? I try to grab the hammer and I say, may Moradin, Moradin, may I be worthy um, you reach out and you you say those words loud and with with confidence yes. uh, as you reach out and, and grab the hammer. And the instant that you touch the hammer, right at the end of saying, Moradin, may I be worthy, um, you are frozen in place. Oh. Um, and Shush oh, and Grolo, you see this. You can see that uh, Thrain suddenly has has frozen. And he isn't frozen like um, uh, like he's standing still. He looks frozen like he's petrified. Uh, oh. Like he is... Um, uh, still, still full color. He's not made of stone or anything. He just, he just seems like he's, he's being built in place. No, no, like, like magic. Like there's, yeah. there's some kind of magic that's like, like almost time stasis holding him in, in, in place. Literally holding on to the, to the base of the hammer. Shush! Look at Thrain. He's something wrong with him. Um, How many of these creatures are between us and Thrain? Uh, so far, you haven't seen any. Although right in this moment. Uh, Shush and Grolo, you start to see more of these tiny creatures coming out from the holes in the wall as they start to to come out. And they all do the same thing. They kind of come out to the edge of the hole and then open their mouths and hiss at you um, and then start crawling down the walls uh, towards you. But the thing that's really alarming, Shush, is that the path that you just came down, uh, you start to see something much worse. Um, it's the same kind of bugs, but instead of these smaller tarantula sized bugs, these are the size of, um, of horses. Oh, uh, yeah. and you can see them, uh, um, coming out from the shadows yeah. and from the places around you. And they are now starting, they, they now have you completely blocked off, uh, and are starting to advance on you. I just I mean, have to say one thing, one thing, and that's 
Game over, man. <laughs> well, I gotta say, the problem is Thrain would normally Game be over, like man. <laughs> giving us some like strat strategery here. Um, I'm gonna go full on Grolo here, and um, I I look at those big big ones. Have I seen the big ones now? Oh yeah, yeah, you can definitely. And I see. and I'm and I get a little protective of Shush. I don't. So I just like <laughs> make a run for the big ones. I'm just gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go. Uh, Pull a little berserk mode or something. What can All I right. do? Um, well, we'll go ahead and have everybody roll initiative, and okay. three, you can roll initiative uh, as well. Rage, right? Rage. That's what I can do, right? But okay, I, I thought rage was taken away from you. Oh right. Oh, uh, no, we're gonna we're gonna roll play, play that right now. Actually. Okay. Okay. So roll, roll initiative. You, you go ahead and roll initiative. We'll we'll get those initiatives first. What is it that I add to initiative? Uh, you have a, in the center of your character sheet. Plus, on the plus two. Oh, yeah, plus two. Okay. So six. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Not rolling very well. Sorry. <laughs> uh, train was your initiative. I was rolling with my real hand. The uh, numbers would be so much better. I don't know if you care, but mine's three. Okay. I got a 21. Oh. With, with you know, quick, quick to respond. Not a lot of things to do when there's monsters eating Grolo, but uh, Grolo, as you you take out your hammer, seeing the situation that you're in, these giant bugs that are that are I want to be angry. Uh and you reach for your rage, your strength, Ooh. and once again find Ooh. it empty. And moreover, since the time that it was taken away from you, you felt that you had almost like an empty shell, like an empty spot where your rage goes and there's, and there's just, it's just doesn't feel full. Um, but as you're reaching for it this time, you realize there's not even a spot. Um, there's not even a place where your rage should have been. It's like the whole container is gone. Uh, and there's, there's, there's still, you know, an emptiness that you feel because you're used to feeling that there. Um, but it, it now feels like not only is your rage not there, it, it, it gives you a moment of pause where you feel like you might not ever get it back. Okay, so I'm like, and then like, I'm I'm po like literally stopped sort of in my tracks by it. Wow, that's nice. um, but that, that makes it Chusha's turn, and Chusha, you see Grolo like pull out his hammer and start to charge, and then and then like come to a stop. Uh, but you are still being advanced on by uh, you can see th uh, at least three of these large, uh, these large bugs and and a dozen of the little ones. Yeah, uh, that are headed towards you. I am going to. I'm going to see how much inspiration. I mean, Thrain obviously frozen in stasis. I'll get to him, but I see Grolo also sort of frozen in his own sort of um, moment of of not being able to find him, find his his mojo. And so I run forward and um, pull out. Yeah, I pull out my my violin and I like yes. play like. A particularly long note, but it's really like the beginning of a battle anthem. Um, and I would like to give a bardic inspiration to Grolo. And then I would also like to, if I could, cast Thunder Wave and blow blast back all of the, the monsters in the hallway. Uh, yeah, you can definitely hit um, the really big ones. Grolo is kind of in, in front of you. You could run up next to Grolo and then mm -hmm. blast the, the big ones if you wanted. I really want, it's like a, like a, like a guitar chord. We're about yeah. to just rock out, and then Moradin's about to take stage. You know. Yeah, yeah. I really thought you were inspired, Grolo. I have I have a violin and I have bagpipes. This felt like more of a violin moment. I'm sort of playing like a guitar. Yeah. Okay. Um, bagpipes just a different battle anthem happens with bagpipes. We'll get there. Maybe once the battle gets really in sequence, then it's just like the ongoing battle anthem. But really, the the beginning is that power chord I'm going yeah. for right now. It just it just carries it fades in. Somehow okay. you're somehow you're 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 you hit the power cord and it fades in and then and then picks up the, the battle anthem. I, I have a question. Even though I don't have my rage, I can't I still do reckless attack? Uh yeah, I uh, I will actually allow you to do so you can totally still do reckless attack. Okay. Um you can't rage, which means you can't frenzy. Right. Okay, well then what happens? Is it my turn now? Uh, so it is, uh, uh, Shush just gave you Bardic Inspiration, so you now have that bonus, and we're going to resolve Shush's um, 
Thunder Wave. So Shush, go ahead and roll me damage for your Thunder Wave. So just for the for the listeners who are curious, um, the Thunder Wave allows me to do a 15-foot cube originating from myself. And so I'm obviously targeting that at the monsters. And then they're making a, a constitution saving throw. And I'm rolling my two D8s. Uh, and I got uh, 12 damage on that. So if they fail their save, ooh, what's nice. going to happen? Um, yeah, uh, it's a, it's a solid hit. Um, I, I'm not rolling for the little ones. They actually can't resist your thunder wave. So, yeah, nobody uh, so thunder wave. your thunder wave hits and all the smaller ones get just blasted back, uh, and, and just crushed by it. They are, they are completely destroyed. Nice. Um, and it's especially yeah. advantageous because you can see that as they're, uh, as they're destroyed, their blood gooey bits and stuff uh, uh, go flying off in different directions and you can see that the stuff that it's hitting, the walls and rocks that it's hitting are also starting to sizzle and uh, uh, and uh, sort of melt away. Um, it's clear that, that um, more than just their saliva is acidic. What um, did this sound like, by the way? You're, was this a note you hit to do that wave? That's yes. the power chord. That's the, yeah, that was the, it was a uh, high meow. pitch and then it was like a okay. brown and then that was nice. right there. I don't know. How, I don't, it sounds really good in com, my head. Coming right into the, <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's the, it's the um, uh, money for nothing theme. Yeah. <laughs> MTV, and then just <laughs> that's the yeah. coming into the power chord. Uh, uh, and you do manage to the the bigger bugs are not destroyed by it, but they are all pushed back, and they even kind of hold up their their uh, pincers and stuff Ooh. as they're as they're like pushed and they slide across the ground. Uh, um, but they are not destroyed by it. But it does, it is enough Grolo to, to, I think, maybe shake you a little bit out of your uh, your nice. moment of hesitation there. Um, okay. But that makes it your turn, Grolo. Okay, well then, I both because I've been rattled because of my insecurities, what I'm realizing is happening or not happening inside of me, but also from the Thunder Wave, I now basically like kind of stumble forward a bit into a reckless attack on the nearest... A uh, large creature, I guess, that I can reach. Mm -hmm. And just as a reminder, these bugs are called bedico. Bed oh yeah, well, bedico. Yeah, bedico on the largest bedico I can bedico on. Uh, awesome. Uh, give me an attack roll on the large bedico, and because you are reckless attacking, you can attack with advantage. Okay. So oh, okay. So I'll roll twice. Mm -hmm. And take the higher of the two rolls. Pretty good. Okay. So uh, twenty. Fifteen plus five. Twenty. That'll hit. Um, and then roll damage for your attack. Okay. Uh, two. All right. So that's, whoa, six and uh, one. Okay. Seven plus three, ten. Uh, okay. Um, it's enough for you to, to kill the one that you're attacking. There's still two more that are sort of right next to it, but you run forward and you, you're able to, to destroy this one that you're attacking. Give me a description for what, what that all looks oh, okay. like. Okay. Because it was kind of reckless. So, so like I was tripping forward a little bit and kind of like that actually added to my momentum because like my body's coming in and then I was like swinging and normally like if it was not going to hit, it would have been pretty splatty on my face. But instead like the weight of my body and the, the mall lands on the creature. And uh, luckily the force of the impact goes like this. And so it's kind of like, even though I'm not using a sword, it's kind of like a split down the middle. You know, like squash. Yeah, and and it. and that stops me from fully falling on my face because like <laughs> you know. the hammer gets to be your anchor point yeah. there. <laughs> I love it. That's spectacular. The other two bugs next to it uh, uh, hiss, um, and their hiss is is almost more like a low roar uh, because they're so much larger uh, in your direction as they watch you just squash one of the one of the bugs right next to them. Are they affected by their own acid or no? Um, they don't seem to be the the splattering of the acid seems to to sort of splatter onto them, and they don't okay. seem bothered by it at all. Um, their carapace seems to seems to be immune to the acids, um, but you can see the floor um, from the bug that you just smashed is all stone, and the stone definitely seems to be sort of uh, hissing and bubbling away as the as right. the acids affect it. Um, that brings us to Thrain. Thrain, when you grabbed the hammer, um, you did not see yourself frozen solid. You're not stuck in that position where you are stu feel stuck or hopeless. Um, instead, there is just a strange flash and you are in a new place. Um, as you look around to sort of get your surroundings, it's mostly kind of blinding because you're in 
uh, a sunny field. Um, and it's a field that is just sort of stretching off into every direction. And you can see mountains uh, uh, just surrounding this field in, in, in every direction. It's like a, a beautiful scene, like being on a plateau in the mountains and there's not a soul around, um, except that there's a familiar sound uh, that you can hear, a familiar tink, tink sound uh, as, you are, as you are there. And as you sort of turn around and get your bearings in this uh, beautiful field that you're standing in with the sun shining down upon you, uh, you can see there is a little uh, sort of outdoor area and shack um, that is set up and you can see a figure there. Um, it looks like the whole outdoor area, the whole shack, everything is set up as a blacksmith shop. Um, and everything is, is there. In fact, you can see, you know, piles of, of coal and wood for the furnace. You can see the, the furnace itself is, is sheltered under the, the, um, uh, shack and roof itself. Um, and you can see the anvils and the, and the many tools that a blacksmith may have, uh, all, all around. And you can see a dwarf, um, standing there. Uh, the tink, tink sound that you're hearing is, is him, uh, hammering away. Uh, on on some piece of of blacksmithing that he's currently working on. I wonder if this is like going to Guitar Center for Thrain. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally the equivalent. You get to meet. Um, um, Slash. By the way, uh, with with the quarantine, I haven't been able to cut my hair, so I actually have a barrette. Oh, I like, love it to keep my hair out of my face. That's what that's what I need. Is it a raspberry barrette? With my hair. Uh, it's my wife's and it works really well. When I was four years old, I stuck one of these in a uh, socket and electrocuted myself and had to go to the hospital. And they, Oh my God, for reals? Yeah, and they woke me up by pinching my nipples, which is disgusting. Do you remember <laughs> the feeling of getting electrocuted? Uh, absolutely. My hands were on fire, actually. My hand, was on, my hand caught on fire from <sighs> the, the amount of electricity, yeah. When I was a kid, I used to squirt the electrical socket with a squirt gun and then touch it. Oh my God. Like Would multiple you get, times? You oh, make yeah. that sound like it that's like, a thing. Yeah, it was like, like a game I would practice. play. No, it was a game I would play that's, myself. That doesn't but, seem like a good game. Uh, yeah, no. I, watch, <laughs> watch your children. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. Watch, <laughs> yeah. Keep track of your children. Don't let them do that. Kirk uh, and I are living, living proof. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I drop to my knees in full prostate position and say, uh, Moradin, you've blessed me with your visage. I cannot look upon you. Uh, he, he's, uh, this, this figure is, is uh, hammering. And as you drop to your knees and start saying that, he stops and then sort of looks around like he doesn't know uh, that anybody's there. And he kind of turns around and he goes, um, uh, oh, what are you doing? Uh, uh, don't just stand there. Come over here and help me. It's not called a workshop for sitting around and being on your knees. Um, I spring up and try to intuit what he wants me to help him with. Um, and he points and he goes, there, the bellows. Uh, work the bellows for a while. We've got to get the heat up. Okay, I start working um, the bellows. And he, he's, just, he's just hammering away. And he's actually working on a sword. And you can see he, he takes the, the sword that he's working on uh, and he tosses it aside uh, with a, a whole pile of just other other various weapons that he has made, um, as well as figurines. He's made a whole bunch of, of like interestingly made of, of iron and steel uh, figurines of different creatures, of different uh, um, uh, people, you would guess. Uh, some Lots of them are dwarves. He's got a whole pile of all these sort of completed projects. Uh, and he walks over and he's kind of drying his hands on a, on a dirty rag. Um, and then he, as you're working the bellows, he goes, uh, harder, harder, put your back into it. Uh, I start working harder. Um, and, and then he, he grabs a whole uh, pile of um, like a basket filled with rocks. Uh, and he brings them over and shoves them, throws the whole thing into the, the furnace um, and then takes a, a tool and he seems to sort of start shuffling them around in, inside the furnace. And he goes, good, good. Uh, that'll, that'll do nicely. Nice job, Thrain. Um, uh, he says, uh, this is not too dissimilar from pulling rocks up from the quarry, is it? Uh, no, glorious Moradin, no. It's not too um, dissimilar. And he, he's kind of sighs, but he doesn't say anything. Uh, and and he, you, you do this for a little while. He's, he's kind of shuffling things around in the furnace and, and uh, getting things hot. And you're, you're just like hard at work getting the, the bellows and keeping the furnace hot. I try uh, to avert my gaze. I'm the controller for this. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's, I, it's uh, X. 
1850 person X. The whole time I'm trying to avert my gaze while really working hard. And then if he says anything, I say, yes, Glorious Moradin, yes. Um, and, uh, and you're at it for a while, and, and he, he actually doesn't say a lot. He just sort of is focused on the work, um, uh, really focused on staring into the, into the thing. And he goes, um, uh, this is no good. You're going to have to switch sp- spaces with me. Um, and uh, and he, he grabs you by the shoulder and sort of pushes you over to the, to the front of the furnace. And he says, uh, let me know when it's hot enough. Uh, and then he starts taking over the bellows uh, as, as well. Um, and he, he basically is keeping up a similar rhythm to yourself, uh, but you're now in charge of, of sort of watching the, uh, the stones in the furnace and you can see them cracking and, and starting to, uh, heat up, uh, getting the, the iron ore, um, soft enough to be able to extract from the rest of the rock. Um, you think it's just about ready. It's just about ready. Glorious Moradin. Uh, he says, Oh, enough of that. Uh, uh, you're never going to get any work done if you keep coming out uh, referring to me that way. Uh, Moradin is fine. Uh, and he uh, stops with the bellows and he goes, right, grab that tool and uh, I'll get the water bucket. Um, and he brings over a bucket of water um, and uh, you've got a tool. It's, it's uh, basically like a big uh, a metal basket basically to grab all the, all the iron ore and all the, all the metals from, from inside there. And he says, we'll have to work it down. It's a little too, um, it's a little too hard still. I start doing it, and then I say, "Am I dead, Moradin? Glorious Moradin?" Um, and he pauses. <laughs> Do you ask like that? Do you say, he, "Am I dead, Moradin?" <laughs> Glorious Moradin. <laughs> and he sort of looks up at the sun, and he goes, "No, I don't reckon you are yet." Okay. Thank um, you. It'll happen someday. <laughs> uh, and he gives you kind of a, a smile, which this whole time he's, he's kind of pretty serious, uh, but he's kind of smirks in your direction and, and he goes, um, it'll be a good day when it does. Oh. Uh, and then uh, uh, he, he has you bring the, the softer metals over um, and he kind of pours them out uh, into, a, um, uh, into a, a mold. Uh, and he says, and he kind of gestures to your hip and you're still wearing all the same clothes and all the same stuff. Uh, and he gestures to the handle of your, of your hammer and he goes, um, I think you probably need a new one. Yes, I do. Well, I think we can take care of that. Um, Glorious and then he, he has you pour into the, into a, a mold. He pulls out a hammer mold. Um, and it's just a blacksmith hammers mold. Uh, and he has you pour into it and then he, uh, he sort of picks picks up the mold and then dips it into the water, um, and he he turns to you and he says, uh, "The thing about blacksmithing is that whenever you're working with it, you always have to keep in mind, no matter how hot it gets, uh, that you got to go to the water. That's your real real safe place here." Um, and he pulls it out and then he smacks the the mold against uh, an anvil, and the two pieces of the mold fall apart, and you've got the the rough shape of your of your hammer. And he goes, "It'll need some hammering out though." Uh, why don't you take this? And he takes his blacksmith hammer from your from his hip and he hands it to you. And he goes, work on that for a little bit and really get the, the chunks out of it. I want it nice and smooth before you're done. I don't know if it happens, but all I hear are glorious angels going, ha ha, ha ha. Does he hear a little, da 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 da? Not yet. Actually, it still looks like kind of a rusty, oh, rusty hunk true, of, yeah. of metal. Uh, <laughs> And, and, and I'll, I'll point out that, like, it really kind of looks like um, any blacksmith shop. It looks like any, uh, any piece of blacksmith tool even kind of coming off the forge. And you were around enough with the, with the quarry and with the people that you grew up with that you've seen blacksmiths and you've seen people at work, uh, maybe even been a part of it. Uh, and this looks exactly the same. Um, uh, maybe even reminds you of your childhood and... and uh, and the, uh, watching the blacksmiths from your from your hometown. Hmm. Uh, give me, uh, give me a, like a. Uh, I guess we'll make this like a strength saving throw. Just to, just as you're sort of hammering away at this. Uh, five, hmm. or six, four. Um, you're working on it, and you're finding that it's or five. It's, sorry, five it's hard to get into the right mind space. You're, you're so disoriented from where you were yeah. and where you are. Um, yeah. And 
and you're you're trying to work on it. Um, and Morden comes over after a short time, and he goes, "You'll never get it if you can't focus on the task at hand." Okay, I will focus. Um, and and I, he take, I try to focus. He takes out a, a sort of um, a, a stubby finger, and he points it at your chest, and he goes, um, uh, "Stay in the moment. Um, it's here that you are right now. Uh, you're not wherever else you might be." Um, and it's and he kind of looks up and he and it's a warm day and he says, "It's a glorious day to be working on something." Okay, so that relaxes me, and uh, I try to be in the moment. I try to forget that my glorious eternal God is standing right behind me. Just touched and, your chest and your shoulder. Yeah, <laughs> um, I resolved to never wash again, even though I'm pretty sure we haven't washed in. <laughs> it's like been a long time. <laughs> years. You were in a swamp. That was kind of like washing. The opposite of washing. Um, and uh, we're going to hop back over to the combat as you're working on your hammer. As, as he's in, in Legend of Zelda and we're in Aliens. Yeah. <laughs> um, the two bugs that are in front of you, Grolo, uh, uh, although they're temporarily sort of uh, stunned and hissing at you, uh, due to you smashing this bug, it doesn't stop them for long, and very quickly they turn around and start uh, coming at you with their very sharp uh, claws and their very sharp um, uh, pincers and mandibles. Ugh. Ooh, no. That doesn't sound very healthy, if you ask me. Uh, it's not. It's not going to be healthy for you. Are they organic uh, at least? Uh, I mean, I guess so. Arm raised. Uh, they are they are um, free range. Free range, that's better. <laughs> uh, Grolo, you take no. Uh, no, I don't. You're gonna take you're gonna take some damage. Uh, no. They both hit you because they have advantage on their attacks due to your <laughs> reckless attack. Um, and uh, one of them just stabs you through the shoulder uh, with his oh. with his pincer, and the other one uh, kind of uh, pull, pulls in and bites you on your on your other arm. Uh, uh, and uh, you're going to take uh, uh, that? 15 damage. Oh, okay. Uh, what does that leave you at, just so that I'm aware? Uh, well, I started at 40, so I'm at 25. <laughs> okay. Um, while this is going on, Shush, a lot of those smaller bugs are still sort of swarming out of the, the holes um, from all around you. And they're making their way, um, because they're coming from the sides, uh, instead of from, from in front of you where Grolo's kind of blocking the entrance. Uh, they're making their way towards you and kind of crawling all over the, the blocks and stuff like that. Um, and a couple of them are, are basically starting to crawl up your legs and bite and, and claw into you as they're, as they're starting to swarm around you. Quite oh, a bit. gosh. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, by the way. <laughs> and you can give me a uh, dexterity saving throw. Okay. In this case. Uh, that is a 19. All right. Uh, you're, you're basically like trying to like step, step your way out for away from these, from these <laughs> bugs as they're maybe squish some with your feet or something like that. We were just dancing a lot recently. So I feel like I'm warmed up. And yeah. I actually say, shush, no time for dancing. <laughs> um, it's a full on Irish jig. I'm like kicking and stomping. And... So, so you, you are going to take some damage from the, they're still getting some bites on you and stuff like that, but you are definitely like, like keeping yourself away from some of the damage as you're, as they're biting into you. Uh, you're going to take nine damage. By the way, um, do we see, are any of these bugs going after Thrain or something? Do we see any of that? Um, you're, you're actually the main sort of focus of attention. It looks like there's not a lot of those smaller holes over by the temple. Okay. Um, so mostly it's that you are blocking the, the way to Thrain from, from sort of your, the position that you're standing in. Uh, you're not sure whether or not maybe there's a celestial force that's, that's keeping them from there. Uh, you haven't seen any evidence of that yet. Uh, it mostly just seems like you're the first targets that they, that they're, okay coming at coming towards um uh the uh oh and you can still hear um these shuddering and echoing sounds of more skittering coming coming from further in uh i want both of you to roll me um i guess uh i i guess just shush shush roll me a perception check 
14. Um, Shush, although you are basically trying to get your way away from these tiny bugs that are that are sort of swarming all around you, uh, you notice a kind of uh, shuddering uh, feeling from the ground around you, uh, and the the wall next to you, closer to the entrance, sort of in between, uh, to the left of you and to the left of Grolo, um, you watch as the gr- wall starts to crumble away um, and a large shape burrowing its way through the through the stone itself. Um, shush, that makes it your turn. Um, just for clarification, is this the same horse-shaped one or is this like a rhino-shaped one? Uh, it's more like a small house-shaped one. Okay, <laughs> just to be fair, that's Look- larger. This is the like the... This is the like the papa. The, the bug, know. the bug. There's a bug the size of a house now. You see, you see a shape coming through. Oh. It actually looks more mostly circular uh, okay. coming this, through the wall. This is the oh, queen. God. This is the queen. Okay. Um, get away from her. Um, I'm gonna um try to run back and get get Thrain. I don't know what he's doing touching this hammer, but I need to run back there and get him because we have to. Get back. <laughs> okay. What are you doing touching the hammer? <laughs> get out of here. So I am going to um. Yeah, I'm gonna like put a hand on Grolo's shoulder as a to signal to him that I'm going to get Thrain because we're still next to each other. I'm assuming um, you're close I'm, enough. I can, I can. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna like. It's there's not even time for words. I just kind of touch his touch his shoulder like a quick pat, and then I run back to to go get Thrain. And I think I'm gonna like kind of grab Thrain and pull him away from the hammer. Not even like I don't know he's in a fantasy land with his god. I think he's just stuck in some sort of magical stasis. I'm going to kind of grab him and pull him and kind of shake him a little bit. Um, as you reach over to grab uh, Thrain, uh, before you lay, get your hands onto him, uh, you are struck um, by a force that sends you flying backwards. Oh, um, no. And the force hurts. It, it is, it is um, pretty painful, actually. Um, and there's a bright flash of light um, as you take... Uh, well, I guess it's not... Uh, not terrible painful, but uh, you take five damage from it. Um, and it sends you spiraling backwards. Uh, and, and you basically, it, it sends you all the way down to the bottom of the steps uh, as you sort of have to collect yourself. Um, it doesn't look like it will be easy to move Thrain at all. Okay. Well, thanks for trying anyway. Um, you also get a better look at the, the position back here um, while you're there, Shush. And you can see there are no other exits. Uh, it looks like the entire back of the temple is completely collapsed. Um, and so this basically is like a cul-de-sac that you are in uh, uh, where, where it's all sort of dead ends into, the, into this temple. Um, and you turn around as you pick yourself up from the stairs and you can see Grolo basically being... Uh, um, uh, swarmed by these these large bugs. So can can we take a break and when we get back uh, on this cliffhanger? Yeah, yeah, that's a great place. All right, we're back from the break, Umberto. If in this moment, yeah, there was a a pause and Grolo turned to the camera and employed everyone to not only go to game to uh, org and find out more about using Dungeons and Dragons in therapy, but also became a patron of the podcast, what would Grolo say and what would he sound like? You may not have to fight these creatures on a daily basis like we do. They may not even stab you through the shoulder. But if you're not going to game to grow, you're not growing. So... I would recommend you do that before you have to face these creatures and you don't know which dice to roll and you don't know what numbers mean what and you don't know how to deal with your life when something stabs you through the shoulder. Do it. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right. Adam Jones. Um, perfect. Uh, that brings us around to Grolo's turn, actually. So, Grolo, you've just been stabbed yeah. through the shoulder. You've just been, been bitten the by the acidic bite of this, of this large bug creature. Um, what do you want to do next? Well, Adam, which uh, shoulder did you tap on as you were running away? I was thinking it was your left shoulder because I was which, I was going to tap with my which right. Which shoulder had I been injured in? Uh, your left shoulder. Oh, Uh-oh. God. I just touched you on the hurt shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> I think Adam just... <laughs> wasn't, wasn't okay, so as Adam is tapping me... I'm like, Rawr! and I like, I turn around and I, and I, I'm so confused. I'm like, 
where are you running to? And then, um, but in either case, I have to deal with the situation at hand. Uh, where, tell me the layout. Who, like, are there, uh, so, so have I seen this huge thing coming towards us? Uh, you can see something burrowing through the wall. Yeah. All right. However, I'm, I'm now a little, I'm, I'm not normal Grolo because normally I think Grolo would just like, like shove the other medium ones aside and run. But now I'm like a little hesitant because like now he's running the other direction. I don't got my rage. Uh, so I actually like decide to just deal with the ones next to me, but I'm a little encouraged by the fact that I was able to damage the one. So, um, so I turn to the nearest one with my good arm, my, my right arm that's not been injured. And I, you know, maul, try to maul at it. Okay, perfect. Um, give me an attack roll. Okay. And then you can decide if you want to do reckless attack or if you Come want on, to do mama. Come on. Come on for daddy. Okay. <laughs> that's 16 pretty good. plus uh, five. So yeah, 21. Yeah. That'll hit. This that's is good. the medium sized one that's right next to you, right? Medium sized one is, is right next to me. Okay, okay and then perfect. I'm gonna roll. That is a two and a four. Okay, six plus nine and nine. Uh yeah, that is enough to to kill that one as well. So okay, so it's only one arm. So I'm like, I just got I turn and I went like, where are you going? Ah, ah! <laughs> and like it's just like sideways splash, you know? Yeah, I love it. Uh, and it, it just cripples to the ground, like splattering, splattering this acidic goo uh, uh, in every direction, kind of away from you, um, okay. <laughs> as you as you uh, take off. And and which direction did you want to run? You're running back towards. Oh, okay, or... so I go like, take that, you beast. Um, and then wait, and then you're asking me which direction I want to run. I'm running back towards where the two of them are, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. That's that's sort of what I was assuming. So basically, I I don't want to turn and run because. I'm worried that they're going to attack me from the back. So I basically start shimmying back in the direction of the temple, kind of looking behind me so I don't trip, mm -hmm. but like trying to keep the creatures in view. Um, gotcha. Okay. Uh, that makes sense. So you're, you're defensively uh, yeah. moving, moving backwards. Um, it's giving you a better, a better position because all these bugs are sort of coming from the same direction. Uh, so uh, you were kind of surrounded before, but you're able to move back enough to where you're keeping all the bugs in front of you instead of, instead of all around you. Um, and from this position, you can definitely see this large bug uh, coming through. And now uh, you can see the, the wall sort of crumbles away and you get a better look at this uh, massive bug. And it really is the size of, a, of like a small house. Uh, this bug looks differently. Um, it is a more of a maggot kind of shape with like a large mouth that it's that it's uh, uh, doing. And it still has these these claws and these feet, but it's much more bulbous and much more uh, uh, sort of cylindrical in shape. Um, and it crawls its way through the the thing. It's clearly using its claws and mouth to just consume. Uh, and eat at the the actual rock itself, and it pulls itself down into the the rubble on top of some, some of the buildings. Um, and you can see it's it's laying eggs all along oh, the way, no. um, and the eggs are almost immediately hatching into these what? tarantula sized uh, bugs that were coming through all of the Nasty. all of the uh, small holes. Um, it seems like those are the baby version. That's basically yeah. as small as they get. Um, and, uh, and as it does, as it crawls its way down, you can hear uh, the sounds of more of these larger larger bugs hissing. Uh, you, they had a deeper, more grumbly hiss. And you can oh, hear more, more of that grumbling hiss coming from further down the passageway that you can't quite see yet. I sure hope this is one of those kill the mother and they all die kind of situations. <laughs> can I roll a nature check to see if I know anything about like how these creatures communicate with each other? Are they like... You know, yeah, yeah. Um, go ahead and give me a a nature check. We already kind of rolled for these guys, but I'll, I'll let this be sort of a check as you're sort of putting together your your. Yeah, now that there's this mama bear kind of thing, like are they communicating with pheromones? Are they like you know dancing for each other like bees? What's the deal? I have a seventeen on that. Um. Uh, awesome. Uh, I will say, I think you can tell well enough. There's probably some kind of chemical communication that they have, especially because they have this acidic spit. Um, and that's probably a part of the, the chemical communication. But you can also see them sort of uh, like uh, uh, nudging at each other, like hissing and nudging and, and like um, uh, bullying each other 
um, especially the smaller ones as they're as they're sort of vying for space headed headed in your direction. They're bumping into each other, and then one will turn and kind of hiss at the other one. And they'll they'll have to. Uh, there's clearly some kind of communication that's that's going on, an animalistic communication uh, that's going on between them as they're headed in your direction. Um, well, I think we should kill them. Uh, is that in character? That's my that's my nature role. Shouldn't we shouldn't we get Doogie Hauser involved so he can like mind read one of them or something? He's afraid. <laughs> you might be able to know their emotional state. <laughs> um, you uh, uh, the Doogie Hauser reference is especially good. There. <laughs> um, perfect. That brings us back to Thrain. Um, Thrain, uh, how's your progress coming on this on this hammer? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, do you feel like you're you're focusing a little more on the yeah. on the task at hand? I, f- I feel like he inspired me to relax and take my time. And... Um, he is uh, uh, Thrain, you're, you're here for a long time. It takes a good length of time to to really work on on tools like this and do a good job with them. Um, and he it, it's it's now been several rounds where he'll take the hammer. Uh, and he'll put it back in the in the forge and work the forge for a little while as you uh, make sure it gets heated up enough, but not too much. And he takes it back ha- out for you to kind of hammer away at uh, and get the shaping right. And then it cools down too much, so you have to put it back in. Uh, so you've been through several rounds of this. You estimate you've been here probably a good hour. Um, that you've just been sort of here in the sunshine uh, working on this. Uh, in that time, do you do you ask any questions? Do you say anything to Morden? Well, first off, I try to take very close note of his beard style because I want to emulate that when mm. I get a chance. Um, the all of Morden, he is wearing largely pretty plain clothes. They're blacksmithing clothes. So they're l- leathers that are dirty with the, the soot of blacksmithing. But for all of Morden, that he looks like a worker. He looks like a blacksmith, except his beard. Uh, somehow, with all the dirt and smoke and soot, uh, his beard is perfect. Uh, there is not a hair out of place. He actually has a, a, a braided beard. It's one large braid uh, kind of coming together. And it's a beautiful, intricate braided pattern. Uh, and it keeps it very simple. It's just the braid. The pattern is intricate, but the, the braiding on the beard is, is just a beautiful, simple thing with very little uh, accoutrements or very little like, like pieces. Some dwarves like to put a lot of stuff in their beard. He doesn't really have a lot of that. And he has it tied at the end with a very simple bit of twine uh, kind of holding the whole braid together at the very very bottom of his beard. Um, it, it sort of stands out strangely against the, the rest of his persona since the rest of him is really dirty, but his beard is just perfect. Okay, locked in, and when I get a chance, I'm going to recreate that for, for myself. Um, yeah, at, after, I mean, at first I'm just doing what he says, but after a while I say... Um, well, I'm thinking, I hope he knows what he's doing, but then I quickly chastise myself and think, of course he knows what he's doing. Um, he, he knows everything. Um, and then I say, I say, Moradin, uh, great Moradin, I, I pray to you in your presence for my friends and for the world below, they are in need of your help. And I would be happy to be an instrument of that help. I hope that you know that. Um, he nods and he says, I, there is a great deal of, of challenge, of strife that you've got ahead of you. And if anything tells me all of this stuff with, uh, with Grumsh that's going on right now, uh, I think it's going to be a true problem. You're going to have to do something about it, you know. I'll do whatever you ask. Um, he kind of smiles and smirks at you and once again kind of pats you on the shoulder and says, I know you will. But sometimes the asking is not always so easy. Um, and you're going to have to make some decisions for yourself, Thrain but I trust you to make the right ones. Um, I look up confused, but I don't say anything. (laughs) He says, do you know the story of how I wound up being, well, eh, enemies with Grumsh? He's an orc and he's evil and he needs to be put down. 
Uh, it would have been great if it was just as simple as that. There is evil and there is good. And Grump's true uh, is a representation of chaos, of bad things within the world. And he's led the orcs down a poor path. But that wasn't the original reason. No, it was a vote. Um, when Grump stood up against all the other celestials and all the other gods, they decided that somebody had to put him in line and had to make sure that he wasn't going to do anything bad against anyone else. And they decided on me. And I accepted the challenge. I accepted the role. And I passed it on to my followers when I made them. Are you familiar with the Hammers of Moradin? Absolutely. Wait. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and he, he kind of points to the hammer that you're using, and he goes, not the Hammers of Moradin, but the Hammers of Moradin. Uh. A group that used to exist a long time ago, when Moradin was a little better known a name across the lens, and when there were more dwarves that existed down on that plane that you call the Material Plane. There used to be a lot more of us. It's okay. Some of the other races have taken over some space there. And we still have some strong followers. Uh, and he kind of holds out his fist when he says that. And he goes, but the hammers were disbanded a long time ago. Their job was to protect the realm. Uh, they were a group of clerics that I had specifically appointed uh, to protect other people, to protect the dwarves. But really it was about protecting other people from... Uh, the evils in the world, the things that I was sworn to protect and that I uh, protected within the celestial realm, and it was their job to protect within the material realm as well. Um, you know, those such as the followers of Grumsh. Um, the Hammers of Moradin were my personal pick, uh, the top of the crop. Uh, they were the ones that I really wanted helping, helping me out down there when I couldn't be present myself. He doesn't really say anything more about it kind of trails off at that point. And he goes, you're almost done on that one. It's looking pretty good. Yes. You know, it's going to need a bit of polish and maybe a little engraving too. I'm not going to let you walk away from here with something, something as dirty as all that. Um, why don't you bring it in? We'll do one last round. Uh, then we'll top it off and, and pretty it up a little bit. Um, maybe a, a nice leather wrap for it too. Perfect. Um, and he, he uh, has you take the hammer and he tosses it back in and he goes, we're going to get it really hot for this one. So watch our face. Um, and he starts really pumping at the, at the bellows uh, uh, for one last round with the, with the hammer. Uh, in the... And you take 50 damage. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it is, it's hot. It's, it's like really like an, an oppressive heat. Uh, and you're really, really sweating kind of both between the hammering and also all the, all the hard work that you're doing. Um, and we'll come back around to Shush. Oh, no, wait, we'll come back around to the bad guys. Sorry. Oh, gosh. Okay, I was about to say, I have half my hit points left. Um, uh, as you are, um, Shush, you are kind of picking yourself up from the ground after being blown backwards. Uh, and Grolo, you are right there next to Shush now that you've sort of retreated back. And you can see these bugs are, are now kind of swarming in towards you. Um, and you can see at least two more of the medium-sized bugs are coming up from behind. But really, mostly you're dealing with this one sort of somewhat injured from the original Thunder Wave, uh, medium-sized bug, and a bunch of these smaller ones. And the, the as you can best guess, the queen uh, kind of in the back, uh, hissing in, in your direction. And the queen's hisses almost feel like grumbles. They feel like, uh, like they shake the ground. They're almost like a, a, a deep reverberation as she... As she uh, uh, hisses out in the same same kind of manner that the other ones do. Um, uh, so you're under attack. Uh, question. I'm, Sorry. Yeah. Um, does my skin like if if that acid hit my skin, will will it hurt me? When the one bit you, it definitely feels like the the I guess it bit your arm. It definitely feels like the acid still kind of burning. Uh, on your arm you don't think it'll burn for forever that's not really how acid works but. okay so like from that feeling do i feel like i could step on the little ones and be okay um you uh it'll probably start melting through your shoes before too okay. long uh do you have shoes does girl have shoes <laughs> yeah i mean i have like like wraps that make okay. like crude boot like things on my feet <laughs> you, you'll probably be able to make it through a few of them before before it it has destroyed the wraps on your wraps or boot things on your yeah on they're your like feet. you know 
thick leather, but still. But okay. based on the burning on your arm, you think you can... It, it won't immediately start hurting you. Okay. Um, uh, Grolo, the large, the medium-sized one, uh, stumps, uh, careens towards you. Uh, uh, and uh, reaches out with both of its... Of its um, uh, pincer-like sword, sword-like yes. pincers, uh, and and jabs them in your direction and does uh, slash at you with with one of them kind of across your chest, um, uh, hitting you once again. Oh! Um, and uh, you're both being attacked by sw- by the swarming of these smaller creatures. So I need you to both roll me dexterity saving throws as well. Oh my gosh! Okay. Oh, nice. Seventeen. Awesome. <clears throat> Do you want a dexterity saving throw for me too, Adam? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Shush, you got a six. Well. You're mostly being attacked by the smaller ones. Got a uh, six on that. Shush, you're gonna take a uh, full damage on that one. Growing, mm. you take half damage. Um, and you're also taking damage from the slash from this thing. So, Grolo, you're gonna take another. Uh, you're gonna take another. 14 damage in total. Oh! Uh, you, and many... Shush, Shush, you're taking um, 6 damage. That leaves me with 11. Yikes. Yikes. Uh, but that makes it Shush's turn. Uh, uh, um, okay, well that's terrifying. Um, so, how can I tell how injured um, Grolo is? Mm. I think you can see like he's bleeding a lot from his shoulder. He's got this big gash down his. Oh yeah, down the his gash. Chest. Is- yeah, he's, he's got this bite mark that clearly looks like it's not doing well. Like it's, <sighs> it, it looks like it's getting worse and worse. <laughs> what about uh, uh, bite mark? And and of course, Thrain just seems just happy as a clam over there, touching his hammer. He's he's perfectly <laughs> perfectly solid, uh, standing there holding the hammer exactly as he was in the moment that he grabbed it. Okay. Well, um, and, did I get a sense when I ran over there where the where the, like the boundary was? Was it touching him, or did the yeah, it was, first come it, out of the hammer? What's the deal? You got really close. You basically like reached over to to like grab him. You were maybe like an inch from him and it's before the sort of like sort of like he's like a wet electrical socket, and I'm going yeah, to touch him. <laughs> exactly. I, that, exactly. That really resonates with me. I appreciate that. With the with the conversation <laughs> we were just having. Yeah. Um, Can so, I say I also stuff stuff <laughs> stuck it uh, stuff in the in the electrical socket? I put an electric motor in one because oh uh, i thought this will be this will go really fast and i put a fan on it which it did uh it also sparked and shot sparks out from and it. here we are professional adults with careers <laughs> look out look it's out. amazing we made it this far <laughs> yep um so i am I'm of two minds right now i really want to um get thrained we can get out of here but i also want to protect um, I want to protect, protect Grolo while he's fighting all those bugs, and I want to uh, GTFO. So I think um, first thing I'm going to do is I am going to cast Healing Word uh, on Grolo, so he can take one d four, one d four healing, um, plus my spell casting ability modifier, which is my charisma. Which so I is, roll a d four to see uh, how much it heals me. I roll a d four and I oh. add three to it, so I heal you for five. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. Um, Back to yeah. sixteen. If I can actually, so how many hit points do you have left? I have 16 hit points. Um, out of what? Uh, well, normally it would have been 40. Oh, gosh. Okay. Can I, since he's taking that, Adam, can I retroactively cast that at a higher level? Uh, yeah. To get yeah, an yeah, original 1d4. Um, okay, that's three extra. Or, for, sorry, two extra. So I add two to that, so it's yeah, 18. add two more. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So now... Uh, I'm going to try to to knock the hammer off of the pedestal with my rapier. Uh, okay. Hoping that that'll get, because I, I I can't touch Thrain, but if I can knock the hammer out of his hand, maybe I can knock him out of this. I don't have a, any concept that he's in. Hey, for in danger? Out. Yeah, absolutely. Right, right. Like, he's going to be eaten alive because he's right. he's stuck. Do you say Actually, anything I wanna, in, this, in this process? I'm, I'm curious of you. If, um, yeah, the only thing I say is the, the healing word. I don't have, yeah, no, I don't say anything to Thrain. I, I'm in full-on fight-or-flight mode right now. Okay. There is, okay. This is not uh, Shush at his best on the desert island making up stories <laughs> right. and writing. This yeah. is 
this is you stuck in a cave with aliens. <laughs> right. Um, so, that have, that have, that have yeah. completely blocked the exit yeah. and they're now... <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm full on <laughs> um, Bill Paxton right now. Game over, man. Um, knock that. I want to knock that hammer off of the pedestal to try to release strain from this, what I think is like an evil trap. Okay. Um, you uh, take your rapier and you you poke it at the hammer with a similar effect. Your rapier goes flying out of your hand. Oh, uh, you no. don't take any damage from it this oh, time. But the rapier, uh, but the rapier goes 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 flying across the room and right into the alien queen. Uh, no. <laughs> oh wait. It goes flying across the room. Oh man, this is too much for me to not. No, I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> um, it doesn't just go flying across the room. It shatters. Your rapier breaks into pieces and erupts. Uh, uh, and luckily, you don't get hit by the pieces uh, as they go as they go splintering across the uh, the area. But you no longer have a rapier. So there's Do one I see no. these reach me? Do I see this? Yeah, you you can totally like. Uh, he's he's behind you, Grolo, but like you you like can see him oh. as he as he does this as he's basically clearly trying to rescue Thrain from his oh, yeah. from his trance from his. Uh, um, uh, from his petrification, uh, and all it results in is is his rapier being completely destroyed. Destroyed in such a way that someday I'll get to meet my god to get a new one. Do you have a god? <laughs> does, she, does she have a god? Yeah, it's got a music. Yeah, uh, yeah. sure. It's got a rock and roll. <laughs> it's got a rock and roll. Yeah. It's Dio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, his name is Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Um, however, I'm not going to make that count as your action, Shush, uh, especially <laughs> because you didn't take any damage. So if you want to do something else, you can totally do that here. Um, well, I did healing word and I tried to poke this thing. I think I'm just going to, like, this is fight or flight. I'm in full on, like, high red alert mode. I'm just going to tackle Thrain. I'm going to f- full body weight, throw myself into him because this is, Grolo is barely able to handle these aliens. Oof. I don't have a weapon anymore. What the, what, what am I going to oh, do? No. We need Thrain. He's, he's the... He's the the leader of our group. Like I, we are, we're lost without him. There's literally aliens uh, eating us at this point, and with a, concentrated acid for blood. Uh, so I am going to dive at Thrain and hope for the best. Um, it's a similar effect. Oh gosh, Ooh. I don't like. Um, uh, oh, no. Shush! Oh man! Definition I, of insanity. How many hit points did you have left? Uh, seven. Okay. You take nine damage. Ah! Oh, oh no! Okay. Um, so Shush, you are now unconscious. All right. Oh. And now, now I'll be ready to make some death saving throws. No. Um, <laughs> you, hopefully, Morden is a god who appreciates how much we rock in his name. Um, <laughs> as you leap uh, and go to tackle Thrain, uh, part of the challenge is that Thrain not only doesn't move, it's like running into stone. Oh, uh, uh, so you, stone. you electric stone, you basically like hit Thrain and then are immediately blasted back. And this time you slam into one of the pillars uh, from the, uh, from this um, uh, temple. Uh, and uh, you slam your head back against the pillar and, and basically fall unconscious, like slumped against the, oh, the edge of the pillar afterwards. And you're smoking a little bit from the, uh, from <laughs> like the um, radiant damage you just took. Like a cartoon. Uh, yeah. Uh, did, I, did I see this? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you totally did. Which also... Oh, um, would, yeah. you, you are, just to paint this scene, uh, as we go to your turn, Grolo, you are standing there, and she's just healed you, yeah. Um, but you are great. standing there. You're the only one <laughs> mobile. Uh, Thrain is, is frozen solid and Shush is knocked unconscious, slumped against the ground. And there is a small army of terrifying bugs blocking your exit uh, and advancing towards you. And Shush is on the floor unconscious. Mm-hmm. And All Thrain right. is in heaven hanging out with, you know, just making hammers. Yeah, although you don't know that. <laughs> I, um, For all okay, you know, what is, he triggered some type of terrible trap. And that's what that's what she thought. There. That's definitely what she thought. What is right around me? Um, like, so there is still that, that larger bug that just slashed across your chest. He's oh, right, right in front of you. Um, and there's a bunch of these smaller ones as well that are that are all around that are kind of trying to nip at your at your feet. Okay. And your heels. Tell um, me if this if this is something that I can do as a turn because. What I'm thinking is, I uh, with, is is Shush to my left or to my right? Uh, he's behind you. 
and behind me. Yeah. Okay, but, but I, I guess like kind of behind to your right. Yeah. Like at the corner of my eye, I'm like, duh. I'm like, yeah. shush, no. Yeah. Okay, and I've just been slashed. So I think what I do, and I have my right arm is the good one. So what I'm going to try to do is swing around to hit the bug that just slashed me and then start running towards Shush. shush. But as I, as I go there, I see if I can step on any little bugs if they're around mm -hmm. because my, my goal is going to be to try to pick up Shush and run towards Thrain. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, give me an attack roll against the, the one guy. Okay. And then we'll resolve the rest uh, based on. Uh, All right, sort of here we go. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Five, uh, ten. Um, oh, but you still have bardic inspiration oh. uh, that Shush gave you right from the beginning. Bar uh, Shush, what's your bardic inspiration? Oh, no, it's die six, die seven. Oh, or wait, die four. So it wasn't die four. a. It wasn't a. Okay. It's die so four. Is it is it four sided or six sided? Oh, it's six sided. My bardic inspiration. I don't know. Actually, I thought it was a d6. I think yeah. it's a d6. So, Grolo, go ahead and roll a d6. Uh, and that adds on top of your 10. So, you already have 10, and you roll six. a d6. So, I get okay. a 16 then. 16 is enough to hit. D6, yes. nice. It's that, that last moment of, yes. of bardic inspiration kind of kind of pulling through uh, enough I, for you to hit this thing. I want to okay. say that the camera pans over to Shush, who is totally unconscious, and his hand just kind of like forms <laughs> the horn. <laughs> just, like, just like completely unconsciously. Yeah, nice. it's, it's like nerves. It's like when a cockroach is unconscious and it's like, <laughs> yeah. it just like still twitches. It like Shush just throws up the horns. <laughs> um, okay, well then, uh, and then I roll my, my damage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, one and five, six plus three, nine. That's enough to finish this guy off. Uh, especially because this is still one of the three that she should hit originally with Thunderwave. Okay, and notice, like, it's like this because I just turned, you know, I'm slashed, right? So I'm still like, Ugh, but I'm like, shush, no. And like, I turn around in one motion, swift motion, I'm like, slam against this creature as I'm turning around to start running. Now, do I get to stomp on any little ones? Absolutely. Uh, I'm going to yes. give it to you along with the attack. So why don't you go ahead and roll me a... Uh, go ahead and roll a d20. All right. Oh, wait. Oops, sorry. There we go. And four. Okay. Well, you kill four of them. Oh, okay. uh, so so you're you're sort of stomping and, and crushing a few of these small ones okay. as, you're, as you're making your way back. And they're burning um, my feet a bit. Yeah, yeah, it's starting, okay. to, it's starting to, it's not hurting your feet yet, but it's definitely starting to eat through your shoes uh, or wraps or whatever you have there. Okay, and then I, I'm running straight towards Shush because I want to pick him up and make my way towards uh, three. Uh, and you can totally, uh, in this turn, you can you can pick Shush up and you're basically right next to Thrain as these bugs are just starting to advance towards you. Okay. Um, and you can see uh, there, there are more of these medium-sized, uh, horse-sized bugs. Uh, that are are coming up behind a, a basically a large swarm, two dozen of these of this these smaller the ones end. that are all kind of kind of My warming in your direction. Friend, the end. Three. Yes. Um, you are <laughs> taking the the hammer. You've taken the hammer out, and you're you're you've really hammered out the last pieces, and it's starting to look really good. Uh, the shape has really come together. It's got it's got like a really really beautiful um, thing. The entire hammer is actually made out of one piece of metal, uh, effectively. So um, it really like like feels like it's formed uh, in a really unique way. It doesn't feel it's, you know it's not a a, a, um, a metal piece attached to a wooden piece. It really feels very solid, uh, and you get to hold it quite a bit. Although you're holding it with tongs and with with gloves to kind of protect your hands, uh, but you get to really like feel the weight of the hammer as you're working on it, um, and uh, and you're kind of uh, you finished most of the work, and now uh, you're cooling it down in the water, um, and um, uh, Moradin uh, has a chance to kind of sit as as the hammer cools in the water, um, and and you he pulls you pull it out and set it down. And he goes, "We'll need to let it sit for just a moment to to let it cool down before we can really polish it and and uh, put some some nice engraving." Let's get a move on. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he sits down, and there's like a, a old bench there, uh, and he sits down and kind of wipes his brow, and he's sweating as well. Um, and he uh, uh, pulls out a water skin and passes it to you, uh, and he goes, "Come." Have a seat. Uh, don't want you to overwork yourself. Uh, I, no, we I, wouldn't I, want that right now. <laughs> I drink and I say, when I die, hopefully, if you'll allow it, a glorious death, will I come here? Um, he says, 
you know, it's a little different for everybody. Um, I try to make sure that it's something that you really enjoy. But no, uh, this place is my own, my own place to go to. I um, pause for say, I say, yeah, I thought there would be more fighting. Yeah, <laughs> uh, sometimes there is. Uh, and he says, also, this is really where I go when I need to be alone for a while. Hmm. Everybody needs a little bit of that. Yeah. I um, spent a lot of time alone until I met Grolo. Uh, plus, if I need to really uh, work on something, sometimes there's just something great about working on some tools, working on some, some weapons, crafting something. Something wonderful about that. Ask him if he's seen Inception. <laughs> um, uh, you have a, a long drink of water and a, and a chance to, to sit and cool off a little bit. And he goes, all right, I bet it's about time to, to polish this up. Um, and he takes out the, he picks up the hammer and he, uh, actually he goes up to the hammer and he says, do you mind if I pick it up? Please. Glorious uh, Gordon. <laughs> uh, and, he, and he picks it up and he uh, takes out some, some tools and some uh, smaller working tools. Um, and he starts to really like polish at the hammer and he's got like uh, some uh, grit, uh, uh, like uh, sandpaper with various grits and he's got uh, like a, a polish that he's, that he's doing. He's kind of doing most of the work at this point. It's really fine craftsman work and, and it seems like he really wants to do it instead of leaving it up to you. But you're getting to really watch him at work as, as he's doing it. And he polishes the hammer completely and then takes out um, a strip of, of leather um, and starts wrapping it around the, the base of the hammer so you have a nice grip to go along with it. Um, and then as he uh, takes the hammer, he kind of sets it um, and takes out a, a small um, symbol. It's actually the symbol of Moradin. Uh, and he takes it out and very carefully lines it up on the side of the hammer and then uh, asks for his hammer back from you. Uh, which you're still sort of holding, whether you whether you realize it or not, you just have been, been sort of holding onto it this whole time. And he goes, "Thank you." Uh, and he takes it and he, just a very gentle tap, uh, and then the side of the hammer now has this this hammer of Morden. Uh, and he picks it up and he tosses it and it kind of flips in the air and he catches it and he goes, "The weight is good. I think it'll serve you pretty well." Um, he says, "Just make sure you craft with it every now and then, rather than just hitting people." Um, <laughs> and he he hands it over and he says. Um, uh, as he, as he hands it over, he, he kind of eyes your outfit, uh, and he reaches over and he kind of touches the cloth of this poncho that you guys had made, uh, that's, that's still kind of tattered, although repaired a little bit. Um, and he goes, it's not bad. Um, tell the band to keep up the good work. Uh, <laughs> uh, he's, he's heard of me. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we're big in the celestial realm. It's a thing. <laughs> and he says, well, it's probably about that time that you should be getting back. Do you have any last questions for me before you go? Uh, don't abandon me in my time of need. Um, and he smiles and he says, you're never alone, Thrain. Never really. I'm always there with you. Um, but remember what I've told you today. Some of it may be more important than you think it is. I will. Always. Um, and then uh, he says, before you go, um, it seems like you might need this as well. Um, and he reaches down to the pile of swords and he picks up a rapier. Um, <gasps> yes! And he hands it over and he goes, you'll know what to do with it. <laughs> and I, I look at it suspiciously, like, uh, like as if he's joking, but I take it. Um, uh, he says, uh, listen, um, one last thing before you go. Uh, at some point you're going to go up and you're going to have to face against followers of grooms that might have a great and tremendous amount of power. Remember that your faith, your faith with me, but your faith in people, your faith in your people, that will hold you true. That will give, give you a lot that you can pull upon. But I trust you can make the right decision from there. Nothing no. can destroy my faith in you and our people. It will always prevail, and I stand with my hammer proudly. And he takes out his hammer uh, and, and kind of salutes you in a, in a similar way. And he goes, go with Moradin, my son. Um, 
And with that, you uh, reappear. Um, rather, you you find yourself sort of a bright, the, the sun above you gets brighter and brighter and brighter until it drowns out everything around you. Um, and uh, the bright white sort of fades away and you are standing once again in this dark cavern as your eyes uh, take a moment and adjust. And you are holding this hammer that once was a rusted, uh, junky looking hammer, but now it is the hammer that you were just given from Moradin. Um, and in an instant it has transformed and you can see that it looks exactly like the hammer from your, from where you were, except, um, that on, on the side that it doesn't have the symbol of Moradin on the other side of the hammer. Um, it says, uh, it just says, um, uh, owned by the hammers of Moradin, uh, engraved into it. Um, and uh, uh, you take the hammer in your hand and feel a surge of celestial power. Um, you can see all the scene that is laid before you exactly as it was in that moment that we that we left your turn. Grolo is standing with Shush kind of slumped over his shoulder, uh, uh, his good shoulder, holding his, his weapon. The bugs are just swarmed around everywhere. And in this moment, you are especially empowered, Thrain. Uh, as you come back, uh, you feel uh, invigorated by your God in a way that you never have before. Um, here's what you can now do. For the time being, for a short duration, uh, you can now fly. You have a fly speed of 100 feet. Uh, you can take six actions per turn. Um, you have unlimited spell slots. All of your spells do max dice rolls, um, and you cannot miss. Ha! What would you like to do? I... <laughs> heal uh shush so i i guess i know this is happening and i i touch him and heal him for uh 19 i believe uh because i do a, a second level casting of cure wounds or sorry uh 21 so 16 plus 5 plus so you get 21 and i drop the the rapier at his side um what I did, I, I guess I might notice he doesn't have a rapier or something. I, I think you have sort of a moment where you can kind of pull it together and pull the pull okay. the pieces. You can see that he still has the hilt of the rapier, just all the rest of the the rapier is shattered. So you can kind of put together the rapier must have been destroyed. Okay. What do you say as you drop the rapier? Um, I say uh, uh, the smallest have the smallest weapon that Moradin ever touched. <laughs> um, when when shush comes back to consciousness he's like slumped over i imagine it's like a fireman carry is that right grolo that's right you're like um, right out here on my right shoulder he's gonna like wake up and then throw his legs up and then be in like more of a fireman carry <laughs> for just a moment as he's like re- totally uh coming to awareness of what's happening. It's like this, this like clutching close to Grolo and then just like drop, drop down on the ground. Ah, get off my neck! And pick up the rapier. But then, so I see that Thrain is back, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can okay, I say something like, Thrain, take it easy. You were just frozen. Um, and I mean, I, I, I say, I, I'm sorry that I've been gone for so long. What, what happened? And I, um, can I, what do I see? I guess you can see the, the swarm of, of these smaller bugs, uh, advancing upon you and a couple of these meat, uh, kind of horse sized ones, as well as this queen that is, that is back there behind them. Stay away from them, Thrain. They do a lot of damage. They'll hurt I, you. I fly over to, um, the big one, I guess. And, and both of us are like, <laughs> <laughs> and I do with the hammer like in front of me, you know. <laughs> yeah. Horror style. Yeah, I love it. And I hit with the hammer, and I do uh, how much damage? I do uh, ten damage, and then. Can he roll damage? Can he roll his attack rolls just to see if he gets a crit? Oh. You said he can't miss, but is there a chance he can still crit? Uh, sure. Just for the Probably. sake of, you know, yeah. 5% <laughs> chance, we might <laughs> like, as well. Uh, 
Yeah, no. Pretty awesome. Okay. Yeah, yeah, just even okay. more while epic. we're while we're having the cinema of this, we might as well <laughs> yeah. get a critical hit in there. So. And then I, uh, so I guess I intuit I can do all sorts of things. Yeah, and actually, you notice as you hit with your hammer, you also do more than ten damage. It's there's there's like a shock of of uh, additional radiant damage coming out from your from your nice. hammer as well. Awesome. And then I um, I I go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> feel the power of Morden's forge and I cast uh inflict light wounds four times <laughs> <laughs> on the on the sort of queen yeah which is um 120 damage <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm I'm seeing this and I, 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 I'm like, oh, I, I probably can fly too. So like, I'm like, oh, and I like jump up. To <laughs> it doesn't work quite as well. Um, it is plenty. You like basically are reaching out your hand and just, just dropping this, this queen uh, uh, into, into nothing with the tremendous uh, power. And with my final action, just because I think I'm in a movie, I slam down to the ground with my hammer and to i don't know just to yeah, yeah, like clear out the yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, the ref the the rabble yeah. uh in this case i love it. one knee Your down landing uh yeah one knee down hammer arm up boom um it, it is a hu- a bright flash of, <laughs> of radiant light uh that erupts from you uh, and uh, and you make a mark in the ground. There's a there's a um, a divot in the stone itself as you as you land down, uh, absolutely slaughtering all of these uh, smaller bugs. And their their um, juices and acids sort of spray against the the back walls, but uh, manage somehow to miss Grolo and Shush uh, uh, as you as you slam nice. down. And uh, th- as you feel the the sort of extra power from Moradin fade away and you feel yourself kind of back to, to how you were before. I hold this um, pose though. I, I just to- you know. totally, absolutely. Um, and you guys, uh, at, at least, at least for a moment, there are no more bugs. There's nothing. Uh, the queen is dead and the, and the other bugs. And, and uh, after you land, there's this moment of, of sort of waiting and hearing, and it is just silence. Uh, and you have destroyed all of the bugs in the, in the room. Let's go. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's go. Let's go, Shush. Shush uh, is holding onto this new sword, very confused, but rushes out after them. Um, so I, I'm sort of, sorry, I'm sort of looking at Thrain as I run. And I, because I, I probably run a little faster than him. So I catch up as we're running out and, and I look at him and I have a little bit of suspicion. <laughs> Meaning, like, because I, you know, I've never seen him do something like this. And then he was frozen. So I, I'm i like happy that we're alive, but since I can't put together in my head, like, well, he must have just gotten a hammer from, like, I, you know, I'm just <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I'm like, what's going on? Um, yeah. Did Grillo, you say anything to him? You guys are, are sort no, of no, 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 your no. way no, out of the face. Because I'm like, I'm waiting to see, because, you know, we've been in so many fights and things before, and there's been like weird magic that I don't understand. So all of a sudden I'm a little worried that maybe like something's wrong with him or maybe it's not Thrain or something, but I don't know. But I'm like at the same time, happy that we're running out of here. So I just kind of like look at him funny as, as we run out. When we get Uh, outside, uh, do we get outside? uh, Yeah. You start making your way out of the cave. Actually, before you get outside, um, I'm going to give you guys a couple of uh, mechanical things. So your new hammer um, uh, Thrain uh, has a couple of effects that are just always on. Uh, you always have available to you. Um, the hammer itself is indestructible. Um, it uh, on whenever you make physical attacks with the hammer, it also adds an extra one d eight radiant damage on top of the attacks. Um, and you can add a plus one onto your save DCs and spell a, spell attacks for your spells. Um, also, the hammer always acts as a holy symbol for you. Um, so it is, it is, you can use it in place of a holy symbol. It has the symbol of Moradin on it. Um, and lastly, um, at any point in time, uh, you can, uh, say a command word, which is really up to you what that is. Uh, and the hammer will light up, uh, with the light of Moradin and you can turn it off as well. Nice. You got a flashlight. What was the third thing you said? 
uh, plus one to your save DCs, your spell save DCs. Oh, spell saves too. Yeah, and your saves spell and attacks. And spell? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Wow, that's a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Um, Shush, your your sword is special as well. Um, but I didn't actually plan for that, so uh, <laughs> I'm gonna have to come up with what your sword does. Right now, all you notice is that it is uh quite shiny. Um, and it whistles as you as you swing it through the air, just like a light whistle, like a wind whistle. Um, it uh, like a... It's not, not quite a lightsaber noise, though. <laughs> unfortunately, maybe next time. Uh, as you, as the three of you start start running your way out, uh, you realize running is a good idea because you can hear more skittering in the halls. And now you have you have definitely cleared this dead end. Uh, but you can hear the skittering coming from behind you. It's clear that this was not the only group of of bugs and uh, badico that was that was back there. There's there's likely Hey, hey, hey. Um, we're out of here. But you're you're well on your way outside the cave um, and don't even see see any bugs kind of coming after you. Just hear the skittering. Uh, as you make your way back to the entrance. Um, the thing that you notice as you as you do come to the entrance of the cave is that while you've been in this cave, it seems the weather has gotten a lot worse. Um, and as you're as you're coming out the entrance of the cave, you're you're high up in the mountains and it is uh, th- uh, the weather has turned to a pretty bad snowstorm. Uh, and it is snowing very, very hard. In fact, to the extent that you can't really see all that far um, out out in the field that the cave sort of faces. Uh, but you're, you don't really have much of a choice. You kind of have to uh, leave the cave and, and head out into the snowstorm uh, to, you know, avoid being eaten by these bugs. Um, so as you start to make your way into the snowstorm, I need everybody to make me constitution saving throws. Can I do one thing real quick before yeah. we, we leave the cave? I, you know, nearly died just now and witnessed Grolo get eaten by bugs while Thrain was, to my knowledge, trapped in a you know, hell trap. Um, so Shush, this is like the, we, we've been in some battles before, but this was like a pretty intense moment. Um, so Shush is going to like not have all of the like veneer of maturity and um, like masculinity. And it's just going to grab both of them and like hold them really close for just a moment. Um, pure like, and then let go uh, as, as just like, I don't know if we're there yet, but I just did it. Yeah. Which arm of mine did you grab? <laughs> um, I didn't. Did I heal you a little bit? Are you, are you, you did still, heal me a bit. You still yeah. mad at me? About it that? is. It is a little better. It's, it's, it's not bleeding okay. as bad and stuff. But, yeah. um, but just like you know, we we're we're a band. We we have like obviously a kinship. We we've been traveling together. But Shush is just having this moment where like we were about to die together in this cave with alien monster bug things. Uh, so there's really just like this need for Shush to acknowledge that, but like physical touch no words because he's not really there yet but like just gonna grab them by their shoulders and squeeze and then let go and then do the constitution saving throw to make it into the, into the... Uh, i put my hand on your shoulder shush and i i look over when you do that and i just kind of like you know like tussle your hair a bit <laughs> uh what was everybody's constitution saving throws well uh, by by moradin's forge i got 22 nice oh. I got a uh, I got a ten six plus four. I got a natural twenty. Nice. Oh, okay, <laughs> Grolo, you're having a hard time in the snowstorm, uh, but Shush and and uh, um, Thrain, the two of you are are really pushing pushing through. Um, maybe it actually make would make a lot of sense. Grolo, you're having a hard time because you still have some injuries. You're I'm still, still injured. Yeah, you're still sort of recovering from from these injuries. Um, By the and, way, I want to do one thing. So as we're going through, and maybe I'm. Cause I am injured. I'm having a hard time. So I'm actually kind of getting irritated. Mm. And so I say, Thrain, what the hell took you so long back there? Yeah. Like we almost died. So I hold up my hammer and I say, Moradin has blessed me. And by extension, the two of you as well with specifically Shush with that rapier. Moradin's forge provided us with the weapons that will free this earth from the Groomshites. I have never felt so sure in my life of my faith and our mission. We will prevail. 
Thor- Moradin has made sure of that. Mm. Well, that's, I guess that makes sense. But inside, I'm thinking, where the hell's my weapon? And I'm feeling a little, a little, I don't know if it's jealousy that he's got this God that just like gave him stuff. And I'm, so I don't say this, but inside I'm like, I'm like, mm, that's not fair. <laughs> no, that's, that's perfect. That's perfect. Um, all this happens. The snowstorm is so unrelenting. It's so powerful. You're shouting all of this. Thrain, okay. you're, you're basically shouting over the winds, over the, the snow that's coming barreling down. And uh, you, you guys are maybe only just a few steps away from the, uh, from the cave, but you already can't see it um, as you're basically like, like trudging into the snowy field uh, and, and you're, you're shouting all this. You're holding up the hammer. Um, uh, shoosh. Uh, with your natural 20 on your constitution saving throw, you're listening to this, but you're also hear- hearing a, a strange sound kind of just uh, coming up from, from underneath the, the sound of the wind rushing and the, and the snow coming down. Uh, and uh, you turn around and you can see um, only for a split second, uh, just before it hits you, a gigantic avalanche. Yeah. Um, and you have only but moments. You have basically enough time to say something very short uh, before the avalanche overtakes all three of you. Um, can I say my hellish rebuke and blast it with fire? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 I'm not going to make you roll. I'm um, just going to say Moradin. <laughs> That's my... <laughs> you hold up your hand and you yeah. say Moradin. Mm-hmm. Um, and then all three of you are completely engulfed by a massive avalanche uh, coming over top of you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did the fire look cool at least before? Oh, yeah. You, you, you hold out your hand and it blasts the avalanche. Oh, man. Uh, as the avalanche hits you, um, it is uh, cold and wet, but it feels like stones. Uh, it doesn't feel like soft water. It feels like hard rocks slamming into you and battering you um, and burying you. And that's where we're going to end. Oh! <laughs> cliffhanger! I do love a good... A good cliffhanger! <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 what you did. <laughs> Um, so, so uh, that's where we'll end. We'll do our, our usual uh, uh, kind of checkout um, for our session. So I uh, spotlight that you have for somebody else and maybe something that you thought was challenging today um, in our game. Uh, who would like to start us off? I, I'll go first. So hands down, man, that story was so good today. Like, you know, they're always great. Um, but just like the story, you know, like the Morden part, the stress with the battle, the, the like cinematic near death. And then he comes out of it flying with all these crazy, <laughs> like it was just such a good story, man. So Adam Johns, this one's for you. <laughs> thinking of you, kid. Sure. Yeah. I'm going to spotlight everyone at the same time, honestly, because everyone contributed to the real tension I felt of this. I mean, of course, Johns is the, you know, the main uh, orchestrator of that, but, you know, everyone took the bait, everyone ran with it. Uh, You know, Umberto, it's instead of just saying, okay, I hit him. He's like, okay, I'm going to describe it. Okay. Now I'm going to, and in my head, I'm like, I can see Grolo doing these things, you know, and with, uh, with Davis, it's like, I can see, him just getting blasted back and uh, just trying. And honestly, like uh, as a player, those are the kinds of things I do. Davis is like, look, I get that this is a game, but if I'm playing in character, like all bets are off. If we can't get a uh, Thrain off of that fucking hammer, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah. so I, now as a player, I know uh, this isn't going to work, but my character doesn't know that. And so, I'm going to do everything I can, you know? And, and so uh, being in the moment like that and playing that story out and again, just the, all of, you know, us contributing to this visual, it really makes me want the listeners to continue doing their, their fan art. Uh, I want that scene of, I don't know, something, you know, where 
all was lost. Shushes um, over my shoulder. You're yeah. flying up with your hand. No, no. Over landing before, on the before I'm flying out, I'm just petrified. <laughs> and, and the darkness is, you know, the acid darkness oh, yeah. is, a, is coming up the, the steps. Like I want that. I want to see that, you know, yeah. in, in art. So uh, yeah, just an amazing storytelling all around. And uh, yeah, just epic, epic story. I, uh, I really appreciated the, both, both uh, my fellow players uh, in the, the moments where uh, Serene was in this um, heavenscape and he was like, my, you, you, were, you kept like, I could tell that you were in front of your God and you were like, do I have to say, oh, gracious Moradin every time? <laughs> just like, do I, is that, what should I, how should I, because like, now we're just making hammers together. Like there was this um, nice shift of, of you navigating that space. And it was fun because like, we've seen Thrain be like really strict dogmatic, you know, priest. And then, you know, we're seeing him kind of like the little um, cracks where the light's getting in a little bit. And this moment was him like really humanly, like excited about this, like being touched by his, his God. Yeah. It was pretty, pretty fantastic. And then just the, the nature of Grolo, like having this moment where he's, the aliens are just bearing down on him. This is like, and this was, a, I, I was, you know, once again, perhaps to John's for the, the cinema of it. Like I grew up watching Predator and Alien and I was having like, for those of you that watch the YouTube, like Adam put his yeah. hands up like the mandibles from the Predator. Yeah. Um, so I was picturing like it was, <laughs> I was having just full on my 12 year old self loving all these action movies was like watching Grolo, just like Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, going to town. Billy, come here, kill me. Um, <laughs> and I, uh, I just really see the cinema of the whole thing. Like, uh, music was action music was playing in my background in my head the whole time. Um, it was hard to uh, know that that was not going to work, but I think that when I try to tackle three, um, but I, I knew it wasn't going to work, but of course the, the, the moment there was, was great. So I also appreciated that moment where like, this band of brothers has never really, I mean, you guys have been traveling together for a long time, but uh, Shush has always wanted to feel like, you know, part of the band of brothers. And so this moment where like we had that together. So yeah. that was pretty, pretty That was pretty really great. I, yeah. I'm going to say one more thing too, which is that it's really interesting for my personal role playing of it because I had forgot. I mean, I hadn't forgotten story wise that the rage was taken away, but it's sort of like the implication of it. And so like when I, when I went, I, st I first went to do what I usually would do. And then Kirk reminded me, he's like, didn't you lose your rage? And that actually, like, I almost felt it like the character would have, I was like, that's right. So it's almost as if Kirk in this case was really like my own inner voice. I almost like to think of it. Like I almost maybe heard Thrain going like, didn't you lose your, your rage <laughs> or something? And I'm like, Oh, you're right. What am I going to do? <laughs> you know, That was really kind of a cool moment that I experienced as a player. It's one of the things that I um, love to do, but really has to be done really intentionally as a game master is um, when you take something away from a, from a character, uh, whether that's an ability or even like a piece of equipment, like shattering Shusha's uh, rapier, it really needs to be done intentionally. It really needs to be done in a way where you're, where you're um, uh, pulling the, the uh, using it as a story moment, using it as a, a moment for character growth or for character uh, to deepen character interaction. Um, and I, I love those moments when they, when they come up. And what I'll say, um, kind of my, my spotlights today, I guess, but kind of overall, you, you guys are all great at jumping in and role playing and, and playing with those moments and, and giving me the opportunity and, and uh, the feeling that I can do those things. Like, you know, I wouldn't normally uh, uh, be, w be willing to kind of take that step and like take, take rage away as an ability for a, for a, somebody playing a barbarian. But Umberto, you're, you're, you're so like ready to, to like jump in and role play and, and accept the, the role play from all the sides and all the angles, both the epic moments of success, but also the epic moments of failure and the epic moments of struggle. And those are all um, good parts of story. Right. Uh, and, and I know that um, uh, all three of you have done such a good job, uh, like being open to the, the role play and being open to the, to the story to evolve in the many aspects that it does. Uh, it makes it really, really fun to be able to, to um, guide those pieces as well as, see the parts that I can't possibly predict. Um, like, to be honest, I had no idea 
that Thrain was going to react to his god by like by like going oh oh gracious Moradin, <laughs> and like I had to go okay well what would what would Moradin do uh, given that that's a that's a great choice and now I have to figure out how to how to uh, adjust for that or Shush like I really did not expect you to to try to use your rapier to push the thing or try to tackle Thrain again and I was like man that's too good I gotta I gotta like use that as an opportunity you're giving me all this great role playing I can't. I can't deny it with something that's that's boring or that's or yeah. that's uh, you know uninteresting. It's got to result in something interesting. I do have um, a wisdom of minus one, so I was like, "This is the right choice." It's, here. it's in character, right? That's <laughs> yeah. the that's the in character thing to do. Um, so I will say, uh, even for me as a as a game master, this was this session. I think maybe maybe one of the most fun sessions we've done so far yeah. uh, because it's so epic and this and this juxtaposition back and forth uh, between the characters. And, and everything like that. It was yeah. like a, a real crucible moment, uh, much like the tent moment uh, uh, a while ago when we did the, when you you infiltrated the, um, uh, the Groom, Groomshite's camp. Um, yeah. It was like a real crucible moment where I felt like all your characters were really coming together um, in a really significant way, and I really, I really appreciated that. Yeah, yeah. And and you know the the fact that. Because, you know, we've had great moments. We had, like, role-playing moments that are not battles, like with uh, cooking with with uh, cruddy and things like that. <laughs> and then the just, like, all the interactions in the town, playing as a band, all those things. Great, great, great. And then we've had cool battles. But this was the first time – and we've had close calls, but, like, this felt completely like, no, we're dead, right? And, I mean, obviously, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, of course, he's weaving it all together. But I still felt it like a good movie. I'm like, like, you know, I kept looking at Adam – and he's like, mm, that's so sayonara, you know, this, this is it. And I was like, that's how I felt. I'm like, all right, swan song. And in that, I had that moment, like decision moment again, where normally, uh, well, not even normally, but you know, like Grolo usually would just keep attacking. But then even Grolo had that like, oh, this is, this is too much. This is the last stand. I'm just going to go pick up Shush and go die together kind of thing. It was really yeah. good. Yeah, and you know, screw just one shot. Like, I want a full graphic novel of this thing. Yeah, <laughs> dude. I want to see the full thing. I want uh, an anime. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, It'd be really amazing. So, as I always say, uh, if you want to learn more out there, listeners, watchers, viewers, about this model, go to gametogrow.org. And you can actually hire Adam and Adam to teach you this model over time. Uh, at various different levels of involvement, say one hour, you know, to 30 hours of time with them. There's also products uh, that we have at game to grow uh, criticalcore.org, criticalcore.org. You can get, go there and uh, get the actual game kit, if you will, uh, along with uh, knowing what you've learned from this, uh, series and also obviously going to gamergrow.org you can find out more information and also as always become a patron of psychology in seattle that's how we know that you like what we're doing so grolo what's the final word oh uh, you know sometimes you take some hits and you get surrounded by like weird creatures that bite you and sting your feet when you stomp on them but as long as your friends are there you can get through most anything so here's to our friends